Welcome to the debate episode of the Muck Podcast. Listen in as we discuss the dark and sometimes weird true stories in American politics. I'm Tina Hadamia. And I'm Hillary Doherty. Here we are. <laughs> well, we're two people. <laughs> Not unlike uh, two people we saw on a debate stage recently. Except Wait a lot, minute. Wait we're a lot minute. younger. We're a lot younger. We're a lot younger. Are you trying to replace me at the convention? Yeah. <laughs> I keep seeing clips for that, um, you know, uh, uh, the Muppet show. There used to be these two old men. Oh, my favorite. I love the them. I love them. I don't remember their names, but oh they were always like these sort of ornery, yeah. you know. Yeah, the best. Old dudes. My favorite. And They'd fucking crack on people yeah. on stage. It was the best. What, I would, uh, those I are think, life goals, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I I, mean, it's. I would vote for them if they were running for yeah. president. Well, I mean, basically, like that's what a cooler. candidate is. A candidate that's, is a puppet. That, yeah. They've got some. It's they've got a lot of people's hands up their asses telling them what to say and what to do. I mean, that's what a candidate is. And um, in America, they're old puppets. Yeah, very old. <laughs> right? What? What? I mean, I have I have a list of how like I got lots of notes here. I've got notes in the computer that I'm looking at because I've had so many thoughts, and I didn't want to. I kind of wanted to do this. Maybe we could do this kind of in order of like, how did we get here? Um, what happens? And like, what's next? Like, I thought we yeah. could kind of do that instead of like. Because we can scream about it, which I, I'm sure, you know, I plan yeah. to. But, um, you know, I just, first of all, I wanted to bring it, make sure that everybody who listens to this podcast knows. Yeah, you gotta vote for Biden. Yeah, but, 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 but also that we have already had this discussion yeah. for over a year on this podcast. Yeah. And before he even announced he was running, we were skeptical of Biden. And we always maybe assumed, I don't know, but thought that this was going to be a, just a one term. And well, he so, said it. Yeah. And so you we know, never it, thought that this it, w it was going to come to this. And I found a clip from our show in April of 2023. We were having a very heated conversation about Diane Feinstein. Oh, yeah. She had just been in the hospital. <laughs> and like, what the fuck are you going to do? You're going to die in office. We need yeah. to have these conversations with older oh, yeah. electeds yeah. in the Dem party. You know, we, we don't have these conversations. And then I brought up that, you know, also we need to talk about Biden because he'll be 82 if he gets reelected. And it was over a year ago that we had that conversation and, so, I mean, and then multiple times after that. And um, and then, you know, it was funny because when he announced it was that was the first thing that was brought up was his age. And there was this whole it felt just like this moment. If you remember what yeah, that felt like yeah. of, oh, my God. He's too old. And then everybody was, was pointing out things about him being old. And we got over that. We got over it. And we got over that hump. And he went, won back the uh, the the, the uh, skepticism of it all because he is with it. He can yeah. do the job. And so what happened in the debate kind of derailed all that. Well, the debate, I think, just showed that this is an old man and whether he had a cold or not and people you know people i mean clearly there was something wrong with his voice so i think maybe he was sick right but when you have a 35 year old or 45 year old or 55 year old or even a 60 year old who gets a cold and has to kind of rally and mm -hmm. you know come forward it's not the same you know like these things you know even though it might be just a minor illness it's going to show on an older person a lot more and it really looked to me like they just popped him full of like you know antihistamines and I don't know what you know what I mean like he he was confused he sounded very confused jumbled and like even when he was like trying to make sense or hit on the points he took so long to get there like his time would run out it, it, uh, it was a disaster it was a disaster, it was a disaster. Would be... like he started to come back towards the end of it. Yeah, I I, I wouldn't know. I, here's, he started to come back towards the end. Yeah. But the things that they were arguing about, the fact that, and, and my husband and I talked about this because I was like, weren't there fact checkers back in the day? And he said, no, there's never been fact checkers um, during debates. And I said, but, but shouldn't, there? and I get, and I get it that like if the CNN anchors were to push back then it's going to be like oh it's cnn they're only pushing back on me you know like i can already see the spin that they would put on it so why not have at these news stations at least fact checking during 
you know what I mean, where, where they could at least put under the thing. Uh, I mean, do you not yeah. remember the 2020 election? That's exactly what they did. Yeah. That's what was shocking That's to me I about this saying. debate. Like, I'm confused. Is they, because and I said I thought if this happened before, listen, it's like it never happened. I said, here's the thing. I think it well, could, no, because here, well, yes, because, but here's why. They had to do that because after 2016 and what a disaster that was yeah. and how a lot of the blame was placed on the media of like why yes. Trump got elected yes. was the lack of fact checking, was the constantly cutting to his rallies again. and giving him more and more promotion. And a lot of shit came down of like, y'all didn't do your job as journalists because they like ratings. And that's another conversation I would like to have today. And so they didn't really fact check him. In 2020, they did. And the thing is, is that usually whoever they're, they're mm -hmm. debating can fact check in real time and yeah. say, that's not true. And that's not true. Yeah. Biden was not great at that. And yeah. he, a couple of times he did say that's not real, but like there was significant things that were said by Trump in the debate that are out and out fucking lies. I mean, full and on so CNN from has the beginning. There's a lot of what CNN has to hold here, but I had no plans to watch the debate. Anybody who's telling me they're watching, I'm like, I'm not doing that. I had to tune in for after about 20 minutes in, I was getting so many text messages from people and not just like yeah. political friends, family, yep. friends that are Republicans that are like, what's going on? Like yeah. friends that are Republicans that, by the way, did, did never vote for Trump, would never vote for Trump, or, but are like, how could the Dems do this? They were like, it, they are embarrassing. They are allowing a domestic terrorist to walk back into the White House. And like, I go, oh, okay, now I've got to tune in. I watched for five minutes. I... It felt like I was punched in the fucking yeah. stomach. It, it, I turned it, was it off. Shocking. It I, was I don't. Shocking. I don't need to watch that. I turned it off. My daughter walked in. I said, "I, I don't know. I, I couldn't even. I couldn't pull my shit together." And I said, I, "We. He can't win. He can't win." And like Trump, and she's like, "Well, what will happen?" And I had not watched the John Oliver uh, Project Twenty Twenty Five clip, which I again oh, encourage everybody to go yes. watch on YouTube. Jesus. And I said, "You know what? Let's sit down and watch this." And she sat with me, and we watched that entire clip. And I felt a lot different that night uh, than I had when, you know, it didn't feel like a gut punch anymore. It felt like, oh, that's right. We need to refocus. Yeah. Well, uh, because, you know, a lot of what's bothering me now, because I'm on Twitter and I don't watch cable news. I, I've never been a cable news. I don't have cable, but like, I don't watch I mean, cable news. The clips that were happening immediately after when the debate ended, specifically Nicole Wallace on MSNBC were shocking. Like minutes after the debate ended was, she literally said to a panel of like 10 people, including Rachel Maddow, who, whose face looked like she was fucking blown away by this, by this Nicole Wallace was actually saying this out loud. She said, well, I just got off the phone with a lawyer and they said that there's a lot of uh, talk at the top of the party, the Democrats, <laughs> uh, who we also need to have a conversation about, about how, uh, you know, the convention hasn't happened yet. And yeah. Rachel Maddow's and now, face was yeah. like, it and went now, white, her face went so white. But and I was like, holy shit, the irresponsibility, yeah. the utter irresponsibility in media from MSNBC to the New York Times uh, op-ed that came out yesterday Ooh. on June 28th is so irresponsible. It's, crazy. it's, it's crazy. so irresponsible, especially, and I had to, like when I'm, tw I tweeted a lot that night and the next day, but we need to remember that these talking heads, this this 24 hour news cycle, a lot of the damage that has happened in this country it's is because of that. Yeah. Whether it be Fox News and people wanting to be stars like Marjorie Taylor no, Greene, to you. promoting Trump, to this sort of destruction, they they make money on chaos. Right. When they make a, money on us falling apart. They have no interest in the best, what's best for the American no. people. So them even suggesting, and then it's like one person says it, and, and it's like a it, tidal wave of how everybody yeah. else has to jump on that. Now we need to replace Joe Biden at the it's convention. Crazy. Wild stuff. Wild. Because, but, sorry, Tina. So no, go, 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 go. Republicans fall in line. Republicans have fallen in line. Moderate, normal thinking people have become zombies behind a fascist. That's what Republicans do. They stay in their lane, they are told what to do. And the second Democrat, the second Biden falters, because y'all knew how old he was. Yeah. Let's not try to sugarcoat it. You have been selling us this man for the last four years that he's yeah. fine. You told us he was fine when he accepted, he said he was gonna run again. The people surrounding him said, okay. And you told us that he could do this. And now, you want to shuffle this motherfucker out? I know. No. It's, no, 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 no. Well, you take it and you own it. This is your candidate. We're not doing that. Because this kind of chaos, what will happen is we do not know what happens next. And they... And here's the thing. I mean, so Hillary is 100% right. 
because if, uh, if, if Trump stepped down at the convention, no, and, and the thing that's crazy to me is... Say it. I know what you're going to okay, say. Whoever, they could put a stick up. Yeah. Everybody will vote for it. Yeah. Now, in the Democratic Party, if we were to put a Newsom up, uh, a Whitmer up, a uh, Josh Shapiro of Pennsylvania up. Kamala. Right? Well, we're, let's not Let, go crazy. Let's not go crazy. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> whoever we put up. That's another conversation. That's another we need conversation. To have, have. Yeah. <laughs> whoever we would put up as the Democratic Party, it would be so much of, oh, well, now they, of course it's going to be this one and not this one. And people are going to be all mad and they're not going to vote because they're not going to like one policy issue or who know, you know, who knows what it's going to be. There's no way for us to galvanize because we never galvanize around anybody. And right. now we have Biden yeah. who potentially, who who this asshole, you know, and I, I there are things that, yes, Biden has done a lot as president. But the people behind Biden, just like the people behind uh, uh, Feinstein or whatever, they don't want to lose their jobs, right? right? Because we bring in any of these people, just like in any kind of high position job, they're going to bring their people along with them. So that means those positions are gone, right? And they're, that's what I think. It's not just it's about like, power. like, let's like uplift Biden, but like, we all want to keep our positions because it's an administration that makes decisions. It's not one person, right? But we have this figurehead and we have a weak figurehead. Yep. We have a weak figurehead. And how are you going to fix that? I mean, um, imagine in September, I, I, uh, Tina. thank God we're... Thank God the American people, like their memory, they have no memory that hopefully well, by the next debate, you know what I mean? That one of, kind okay, of far well, away. It's, it's the, it's the but, memory, but also because of that 24 hour news cycle, within 12 hours after the debate, he's back on a stage yeah. and sounds incredible. It's crazy. He, it, it was crazy. Minutes after he minutes was giving after rally, he walked and out he and it was, was like, incredible. where's this, where, where, so... But I want to, let's, wait, 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 let's play that clip. Let me play this clip from Friday. It's an incredible clip. I really think y'all need to hear it. Tina will put it in the um, Tina will put it in the in the in the in the YouTube video if you watch our beautiful faces every uh, Saturday every Wednesday morning. But here we go. I don't walk as easy as I used to. I don't speak as smoothly as I used to. I don't deba debate as well as I used to. But I know what I do know. I know how to tell the truth. I know, I know right from wrong, and I know how to do this job. I know how to get things done. And I know, like millions of Americans know, when you get knocked down, you get back up. I get knocked down, and I get up again. And then I get back up. You get back up. You get back up. You get back up. Get back up. And it's a long time between now and November, everybody. Take a deep fucking breath. It's a, uh, long, it time. a long time. Can Joe Biden do the job? Yes. He can do the job. Yes. I don't even care if he goes and he gets if he gets reelected and everyone around him is 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 working as the president because that's what Trump does. Yes. I Trump's mean, not really the president. Yeah, no, like everybody no. around I him mean, is please. telling him what to do. He takes one suggestion and all of a sudden that's that's the thing. And all he does is say the same thing. Like throughout that entire debate, well one, everything was a lie. I mean yeah, he, he he said that's I mean, the thing, dude. He's like, I didn't have sex with a porn star and then you know, and then he's like, uh oh uh, oh god, the mentally ill and the and the you know, the same thing well, about the borders. The like, abortion comment was insanity. It's, and it's, here's what the quote, what he said. In Dem state, in blue states, you can give birth at nine months and then they, they abort the baby. And the fucking moderator goes, okay, thank you. Yeah. And they go to the next question. I'm sorry, what? Yeah. Did no, you say thank you? Thank you? Because, yeah, because you that know that's, that's not a, a thing. That's a birth. That's not an abortion. So uh, here's the thing. It's insane. What we got here is a, there's a lot of problems that have happened and a lot of things that have gone wrong. And I, again, if you are a fan or if you've listened to this podcast from day one, I have not been shy about how I feel about the Democratic Party. Uh, it is a what happened. What's happening on the national level is exactly what happens on state levels and what happens local, in local levels. Yeah. They do not plan. These conversations about having Biden step aside do not happen weeks before a no. convention because of how he behaved in an hour of television. 
That is not what happens. They are that is psychotic, it's crazy. irresponsible, and it's dangerous. And we have one goal here, everybody. One goal. And that is to keep Trump out of the White House. Yeah, that's it. You have no idea. We, we have an idea. I'm sorry. We do have an idea. Because unlike Dems, Republicans plan. that Go watch. Go read about Project 2025. Yeah. Go watch the John Oliver clip. They are ready on day one. But here's They the are thing. ready to take over the government. And we will, it will change the face of what we know as United States democracy forever. Now, I still have people in my life who are Democrats who are moderate Dems that like, meh, you know, like, and, and, and the response is meh. It really is. It's like, uh, it's not going to be as bad as you think it is. We survived four years before you're being dramatic. And I'm like, are you crazy? Like, what about this? What about this? What about this? What about this? And ah, that, that stuff won't happen. And it's like, well, I'm going to be fine because of blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, yeah, you're going to be fine. But Everyone else is not going to be fine. And and it frustrates me when people who are in positions of privilege in our culture and in our society where maybe four years of Trump or a lifetime of Trump and the Trump family isn't really going to hurt them anyway because they have money and they're a certain skin color and a certain gender. You know what I mean? But like the rest of us are fucked. And for people to just not care about that or be so dismissive of it is frustrating. Yeah. And the irresponsibility to go back to that, th this party had four years. They had, the in, in the first two years, we should have started seeing whoever was going to be the replacement starting to come to events or, you know what I mean? Like started, we started, we should have started to have some idea of but. like who was going to be the, the person to take over. And everyone's going to go, oh, but what about Kamala? What about Kamala? No one is going to vote for Kamala. We know, but you know what? That there's the Hillary situation. But if Kamala would come out and say, I don't want to run for president, right? I will, but this is the person yeah. and I'll be a VP candidate again for this or I, whatever. Like, like people can't do what's best for the good of the people. It's you know, only for the good of themselves. That's how we should have known that he wasn't going to run for just one term because we never saw her. We never saw her. We never saw her. Yeah. And I think it's, it, the, listen, 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 listen. And I think the she The fact that Kamala's name job. is barely being mentioned as someone who, but because. Even now and, they didn't and, even and mention it. Even if, now. if you don't take a step back, it only makes sense that Kamala would be the person, right? That's who makes sense as far as succession or Correct. what's next. Like, that's what makes sense. So here's what I don't like. Uh, I don't know if you've ever been to a convention or seen a convention, but it looks like a Trump rally. Everybody's got their red, white, and blue yeah. top hats on. These are diehards, yeah. right? Alfredo, our friend Alfredo is going to be there. Oh, <laughs> you know what? I'm just saying, all I'm saying is this, because, uh, you know, he'll be at the convention. He's a delegate. He's bringing Florida votes. Yeah. Because Biden, we all voted. And what they're planning on doing is handing our votes off to somebody else that we did not pick. That's what will happen at a convention, everybody. Yeah. When you went to vote, if Biden agrees to step aside, which uh, he's not showing any sign of that, but if he agrees to step aside, he will have to uh, allow his delegate votes to go on to whoever right. they, they nominate from the floor and right. they vote for. And which like, means mm -hmm. my vote and my decision of it's who not, I voted yeah. for will, well, all, actually, we didn't have a presidential primary here no. because Florida Democrats are pieces of shit. <laughs> But all of the things, like our decision of who should be the Democratic nominee will be taken from us and given to a handful, basically, compared yeah. to the millions of people in this country, to decide. And what are their options? Who's coming out? And I've heard, I read many things that said that, you know, diehard people will not, like, a Newsom, he was already that night going, no, 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 Biden's the nominee. Now, I, you know, now, I'm sure as a politician, he can be convinced to yeah, change his tune please. if the president gives him a call. Yes. But I'm I just saying from the floor, win. we're going to have lunatics uh, doing this. And I, I'm not okay with that, no. by the way. I'm not okay with it. I mean, unless they fight to the death like the Republicans do, you know what I mean? And whoever, like, last man standing kind of thing. But... Um, I don't know who I have faith in to do that. And the other issue is like all the money that has been being dumped into the Biden campaign, they can't just transfer that money to the new nominee, right? So then we're going to no be, idea. they can't. So then we're going to be in the middle of uh, what, August or whenever? July. And July. And um, 
what have a new candidate and we're like a couple months out of an election with no like, I can't even, it's my a, brain can't wrap no, around it's like a, the nightmare. Let me say something and, and real the, quick. And the flyers and the, listen, they can't. You know, we we're, always we're talk on the, about. We're on the train. Now we're on the Biden train. We're on the Biden train that you put us on. You put us on. You put us on this train. There were plenty of people that were dismissed. Gavin Newsom started an exploratory committee a year and a half ago yeah. to be the nominee. Because we didn't know if Biden was going to run again. And he was smart to do that. All you do is you put polls out. Yeah. You see how you test the waters to see how people feel about you as a, as a, as a person. Do they know who he is? Do they know, do they oh, know they what know. he's done? Have, do they recognize his face? Yeah. Do you got a picture of him? Do you know who this is? That, that's what he did. He was so badly written about, yeah. talked about by Democratic strategists. How dare you? How dare you step up and do this before he says if he's going to run again? How dare you do this to the president? The man was planning for the future of this country. Because you'd have to be deaf, dumb, and blind to not understand that Biden's too old to be a nominee. Listen, and you have California, to really understand. Like, Diane. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's really insane. To, yeah, he's the one who had to replace, yeah. uh, put her replacement after she died. Yeah. Like, I, the man knows what's up. He knows, man. And so I don't know who it will be. I, you know, listen, it's so, uh, most of my issues on Friday, uh, and I sent you and Justin a, a, a voice message because y'all, you were out for the summer. J Justin doesn't work on Fridays. And I was driving to work like everybody else, right? <laughs> And thinking about everything that had happened, it, it still was like unbelievable to me running through my mind. And I sent you this voice message because as I look around and I'm driving, people are still up in the morning. People are still going mm -hmm. to work. The world is still turning. Yeah. We have to remember that the days will come, that the weeks will move, the months will move. We've got m months before this election. And what we're not going to do is get off course. To me, listen, I would love to have a Gavin Newsom up there debating Trump. Oh my God. I would love to have a Gavin Newsom as a nominee. To me, like we have oh. this, we always talk about the big tent. Yeah. The Democrats are the big tent party because we have this big tent and everybody's but welcome we to come inside. Yeah. But we're not supposed to be a not. circus. <laughs> but the big tent isn't supposed to be a circus. It's not supposed to be a circus. And that's what this looks like. Chaos. And I also like, listen, I know I have, the, I know I'm so proud of that clip of us talking about how he shouldn't be. I'm so proud of it. But the one thing I'm more proud of is the fact that I have been screaming and you have been screaming because of our experience working with Democrats about how chaotic it is. There is never a plan and it's not hard to make a plan. I know, you get I some great minds either. together in a room and you make a plan about what we want to do in this country and how do we get there. And think and about it, and the part of it. And think about building yes, these benches. And like, absolutely. Who can we have? Yes. Yes. This is someone in the school yes. board. This person would be great in the commission. And then in five years, they run for a state house. And then from, that's how, I, it's like, it's but chess pieces. It is. And absolutely you have to part think of about people. But in, in our stupid county, we still have, like, for example, our SOE election. Right? Yeah. We have Joe Scott. Yeah. There's another Dem running against him. Uh, you know, it's stupid. That's you know what I'm mean, saying? Like, that this shouldn't is happen. Well, we have a very, we have a very. This is what I'm saying. Uh, like, what is going Ineffective on? and, and, and. Uh, it's a waste of weak, everybody's time. We have an ineffective and weak uh, chair of the Broward County uh, Democratic Party. But the part of that plan of what's next and what's to come in the plan is to have those conversations with our elders in the party. You know, you know who is missing? I don't know. I haven't heard anything from, haven't seen is hiding in the last couple days is Nancy Pelosi because she can't talk about this. She's literally running for re-election. It's insane. And she's in her late 80s. She needs so to she go away. I can't even understand. have that conversation. Let me, and well, actually, fact, let me, double, fact, I'm a double crack. And the check. fact that um, on that stage, um, January 6th was blamed on Nancy Pelosi over and over again. 80, she's 84. Over and over again by Trump. Uh, she admitted yeah. it. She said it was her fault that it happened, so it's not my fault. Like, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah, it's, it's, it but, is lunacy. Yeah. It's lunacy. But again, I have people in my life who are like, Trump 2024. Uh, I, you know what? Here's the thing. What do I do with that? I don't know. It's very hard. Yeah, I, nothing. You don't do it. You just, you, you, I don't even know why you're still talking about them or with them. Like, forget yeah, it. It's don't talk about politics. I know, but you I can't know. talk about politics. No, I don't talk about like, politics, oh, but. Girl, <clears> forget it. Anyway, all I'm saying is like we have these are the conversations that need to be had. And when you have people like Nancy Pelosi or McConnell who should not be in office and should not be running and they're continuing to do it and then you they can't even comment on this shit. They can't comment on it because they're in the same position. Listen, he's he's running for office and it all square squarely lands with Biden. It squarely lands with him. 
He made this decision. You all supported it. You all backed him. So I don't want to hear anything else about it. If you want chaos, you that, that means Trump's being elected. Yeah. If we get to this, listen, we can all have the conversation. You can have the conversation about what happens next. What are we going to do? If Biden doesn't go along with it, there's no point in having the conversation in the first place. He's the one who has to decide. And I, what, what really, He's not gonna you know, the thing that really bothered me yesterday. If he was going to step down, he would have stepped down. Yeah. He wouldn't have rerun. He, he's, I mean. not, he's not going to do it. He's not going to do the it. The thing that really bothered me yesterday is this, and I, I sent that to text to you guys too, is this man should be going home in November. Yeah. He sh or January. He should be going back to Maryland. He should be sitting on a porch. He should be surrounded by his family and his loved ones and s spend the rest the next 10 years Whatever, however long he lives, yes. 20 years, he should be spending it with his family. He, that is what this man deserves. Yes. He spent the majority of his adult life fighting for the American yeah. people and being in service to the American people. That is what this man has done. He saved us from Trump he being reelected. He should thing. get a medal of honor this for that. He should not be forced to get up on stage and try to debate a, a fascist who is out of his mind and also the, the most easy, easy, easy candidate to beat. But you have to put someone up against him who could fight him. Can fight. And Joe Biden does not deserve this. But y'all don't know how to have a conversation with somebody and say, no. You don't know how to do it. And Joe Biden could have left a hero. He Absolutely. could have been like, guys, I came in. I saved the country yep. from this lunatic. This is the person that I know can continue and carry the torch forward of democracy. This is the person. And everyone be like, oh, my God, of course we trust you, Joe. Like, you saved us. You did all of these things. You've been grooming this person. Okay, we'll believe in you. You know what I mean? Yep. They had two full years yeah. <laughs> where he could have been whispering and, and, and planting the seed in all of our ears of the person who is best situated to replace him. Yeah. And he would have gone out a hero. We would have been like, oh, my God, Grandpa Joe save the day we love him and now we're all like oh shit is grandpa it's, joe I think, gonna uh, make it i think that that's why and it's a shame but it's I, a shame i think that that's why because his legacy's fucked now i think that that's why none of this really made me as angry as it is is because this is so again very typical of how democrats work it, they don't like to do the work. They don't like to plan. They don't like to think of head, ahead. There's no forth, foresight of like what could happen. Maybe like you can't tell me you spend every day with Biden and you thought that he could debate. Like there's just no forward thinking ever. And this is on an epic level. But we've but we're, we know this. We've seen this every single year. We see this every single election. We know this. This is not new to us, what is happening. It's just happening on a bigger scale. Weeks before a convention makes total sense that Democrats are doing this. This is how they <laughs> operate. This is how they operate. But moving forward, mm -hmm. I, I just, there's so much at stake here. And I can't believe, again, that any sort of media whether it be a newspaper article or a talking head would suggest that the Democrats implode when we are four months away from possibly having Donald Trump and his, I, I, his, his army of fucking goons. I can't even imagine sweep into our Can country you again. It's, it's uh, really, it's, 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 it's so scary. It's scary and it's irresponsible and it's dangerous. It's dangerous what they're doing. And they have to take a step back one debate performance, which I'm not asking you to forget. I don't want you to forget it. I want you to remember it because this is, this is why I want you to remember it. Because I want you to be involved. I need you to get involved. I need you to understand that this is not okay that he's the nominee. It was never okay that he, that he was the nominee again. We all had to swallow a very bitter pill, at least the people who aren't the sycophants of Biden, which you know that we're not. We all had to swallow that pill and go, okay, we had a lot of people around us who were telling us, oh, it's going to be fine, it's going to be fine. Even though we know, we're not blind. We're not, there's no blind loyalty at the Muck Podcast. There's none. If you're a piece of shit and you're a Democrat, we're going to tell you, Biden's not a piece of shit, but there's pieces of shit around him who are doing nothing 
for the country right now. No. What's best for this country? And I don't know where these 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 talking heads stand, where they stand politically, but the glee, I actually texted or tweeted that to one of these guys. The glee in his voice talking about you can't this is literally his face. You can't erase what that debate performance was. You can't erase how bad he did. The smile on his face on a CNN moderator saying this and you got to remember who's watching these programs. My mother other people who watch Talking Heads and watch these cable news are hearing this. Yes. Biden needs to go. Biden needs to go. Biden needs to be yeah. What the fuck are you doing? And it's true because what are you I've doing? had conversations with some people who are saying that very thing. And here's the other part. Where was the New York Times op-ed on Trump that said Trump should back out and not be the nominee after because 34, 34 felony convictions? Like, this is the thing. Why this is a is news the thing? And why is a news story now about all the lies? Thing. All the lies he told in the debate. Not... Why are we focusing on Biden who, listen, I'm not, I know I sound crazy when I say that. I know he looked bad. I know. I get it. But there's no accountability for the giant liar in the room because this is how he has completely uh, manipulated every single person in the world. He's Trump train. He lies and 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 we have accepted him as a liar so that we no longer hold him accountable for his lies. We just go, well, he lies. But people who don't pay attention to politics and just tune in when it's time and people uh, during, like during him, debates, him. but people who have, who, let's say an independent who, I, I don't know how these people don't know who they're voting for, but let's say they're like, all right, I'm going to, it's the debate. I'm going to start paying attention. I'm going to see what's going on. And they see this, they see someone who, who is completely lying and they don't know that he's lying because nobody's correcting him. And they've got somebody who can barely people. get through a sentence. Yeah. That's it. It's like the, it's like the, the Kennedy Nixon debate all over again. You have, Someone who, yeah, you know, and, and not to come do young old, but that was the thing with Kennedy. Like, he was sharp. He was quick. He was, you know, uh, uh, capable. And then you have this old dude. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it just... I, I just think that... I, here's the other bit. Here's the other piece. Stop asking the American people to do this. It's, it is exhausting as someone who's overly informed. I'm informed way too much. I, I can't sleep at night. I, I'm so informed. Okay. Stop asking people, the American people, to vote like this. It's unfair to us. And you, what you're, you've done is you've left people throwing their hands up in the air and walking away. Stop doing this to us. Elections, Roe v. Wade, he kept saying he can restore Roe. That's, I don't understand that. What are you talking about? You, unless you have control of Congress, I don't know what you're talking about. So let's stop putting... All everything the the voting rights a row uh environmental causes climate change things police judges supreme court the second trump gets elected two of those 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 uh oh, supreme done. court justices are retiring i mean we're already so, screwed on so can students. we please stop putting this on the american people and i love being a democrat i love it is how i identified since i was 14 years old it is who i am it's what i believe in it's the cause that I will get behind, but I, it's very difficult to defend it left and right when you fail to do the work. You're not doing the work. And it also exhausts volunteers. This is why people don't show up for you locally. I mean, people go, oh, I'm not going to do anything anymore. I, I get it. I, I, I'm exhausted and I'm not involved. You could imagine how I felt when I had to keep my mouth shut at meetings and, and, and events, watching how we fall in line by, behind people who are empty suits. Yep. Because they're, well, who else we got? Yeah. That kind of thing when someone's a piece of shit and we're still supporting them because we don't have any other option. That's why I had to leave that work because I can't stop being vocal about that. I can't smile and shake hands yeah, with people not, who are pieces not. of shit. Like, I'm not doing that. I'm not endorsing people like that. I'm not doing that. We got to start being very honest. And the Democrats are not known for doing that within the, the party. That, that was a tweet that I had is that... This all happens because we don't know how to be honest. Well, and I don't understand, like, why we can't get it together. Like, I don't understand. There are smart people in the room somewhere. But it's, a, a, I mean, it just comes down to ego, ego, ego. You yeah. know, like, that's what's happening here with Biden. He had the opportunity to do the right thing. And whether it's him or the people around him telling him, no, 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 we need you another four years, you know, who knows? I don't know. I, 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 it, it's, but now it's too late, like we said. Here we are. 
And it's either Trump or Biden. It's either democracy or not. And I'm not being like hyperbolic. Look at what is happening all over the country to women. Yeah, it's. I it's, mean, and and the fact that there's they are no like, other the choice language, here. The language of of death penalty for women who have abortions, like women are under attack. Reproductive rights are under attack. You know, anyone that looks different. Uh, they're under attack. They're putting up the Ten Commandments in public school classrooms in Louisiana. They're making the Bible required uh, that, yeah, I reading have that. In, in, Oklahoma. in Oklahoma. Not required reading. That, that every teacher has to teach it. Now, if something like that happened here, you know, you could teach things however you want to teach things, right? I don't know. I'd be opening up that thing and saying, look, let's see what let's Jesus really look, said. Look, well, and let's look at all the bullshit that's in here. Yeah. And it's, I mean... It's pretend. Fine. We're going to look at it as a work of fiction. It's outrageous. And then I was thinking about it. Every single classroom, every single teacher. So like in the middle of physics class, like yeah, I could see it in like a history class or maybe an English class, but in physics, they're busting out the Bible. And you know what I mean? In anatomy, like, oh, what does the Bible say? It's, I, I don't There's understand. A, we, have a, we have a constitution for a reason. I don't understand. We have a constitution. It's unconstitutional. And the problem with Trump, too, is, is like Hillary said, we're going to lose more judges on SCOTUS. And right now, SCOTUS ruled this week that they can uh, take bribes, but as tips after a ruling. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> what's to say, yo, yo, Alito, yo, uh, 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 the guy I hate, uh, Thomas, you know, hey, rule this way and I, you're going to get a big fat tip after. Yeah. This is the stupidest thing I've ever heard of. And then they overruled the Chevron ruling. Yeah. Which, um, and this, before, judges were able to defer to experts in certain fields, to, to, you know, before they ruled on something. Because, you know, they're judges, but they don't know yeah. the ins and outs of, you know, things like, you know. Environmental maybe, science. Environmental science. So, you know, fuck clean water. Fuck having clean and non-contaminated food. And, you know, fuck clean air. Because now judges, which are a lot of, like, Trump-appointed judges, like, who do you think they're going to align with? They're going to align with, who at like, the Koch brothers. They're going to align with the oil companies. Like, it's such well, and, and, bullshit. And, and, that really... and go back. Everybody's homework assignment is to go read The Jungle by Upton Sinclair. I read that in high school, and that's what made me a vegetarian mm. because it is, I mean, and granted, it was, like, well before my time, but the description of the meatpacking industry and, and, the, and all of that sort of industrial stuff and, like, fucking nightmare. Like, is this what we want to go back to? Go read that book. Like, people are stupid. Mm. And then they also ruled on that January 6th. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the obstruction charges have to include proof that the defendants tried to tamper with or destroy documents. So now that's kind of opened the door. That's if the cases have already been settled. It's, it's. On the large, the more serious ones. Oh They've my si God. They sided with the rioter. They sided with the rioter. Surprise, surprise. So. This is what corruption looks like. It's a, it's this a, is what corruption looks like. And we are going down a path where th that, that, that that's going to be the full control always. And what are we going to do when you can't go to the highest court in the land to have a fair and impartial decision on something? And now they're going to start having new precedent based on the new rulings. Yeah. <laughs> and then how do you fight that? It's dark. Well, I can't. It's very dark. I, 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 I mean, speaking of like the people that like the Chevron, right, where they can make these decisions and the Trump appointed people. Part of that Project 2025 is this thing called Article F. Where they can, they it's in the hiring process, the process of government employees, and a lot of them are impartial. They're not appointed by right. the president, and so oh, now they're hired president. because they're experts right. in the field, like a hurricane a weather expert right. or whatever. And now, when he gets reelected, he's going to reinstate Article F because he had had it. They they put it in place like in October before he was. Um, before Biden won. So Biden immediately overturned it. But it's basically hiring process uh, based on loyalty. Who do you support? They can literally yeah. say, who do you support? Yeah. They can go to the government employees there now and say, why did you vote for a Democrat two years ago in the midterm? Yeah. You know, are you loyal to, to Donald Trump? And so you're going to get people there who are not experts in their field anymore. You're going to get them there because 
they are loyal to Trump. And one of the ones that, of course, I heard and it piques my interest was the National Weather Service and NOAA, which is for storms, yeah. which is who we look to as Floridians for should we be preparing for a storm, what's happening, and they completely want to not only eliminate that, yeah. <laughs> but also have somebody in there who's loyal to Trump, which means, I don't know if yeah. you remember this, when he had that hurricane map, yeah. and he drew with the uh -huh. Sharpie. Yeah, oh, that's could it, could it also go here, and he went with the Sharpie? Like, it's just... Um, we're in Looney Tune land. It's, it's a and very... Uh, it's dark. It's, we're going to be it's trapped. A, it's a dark, dark time, and... Oh, my God. So, yeah, I don't know what will happen moving forward. I don't know what will happen at a convention. I think it's irresponsible for us. I think it's okay to have the conversation, but I think we also have to have some sort of, um, be some sort, do some sort of uh, introspective sort of idea in the party or, or conversation we're, we're of Americans. what have we, what have we done? <laughs> what have we, why yeah. are we here now? Yes, have the conversation. We have time. If that's something you want to do at the convention, whoever you put up, I'm going to vote for him. If it's Biden, if it's yeah. Whitmer, if it's Newsom, if it's Kamala, they will have my vote. They absolutely will. But here's what I say to the Democratic Party. Get it together. Yeah. It's like right now they should know in four years, if Biden wins, they should know today who are our top three moving forward to run in the next election. Yeah. These should be the conversations they're having. Like, and it's a shame because this is, I think, it would have been a beautiful opportunity to usher in a younger, more capable candidate and start maybe pushing us, maybe, you know, a little progressive. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we have a good opportunity here because we have Trump as a candidate who is outrageous to actually get in a really good Dem. And not to say that Biden isn't a good Democrat. He's a great Democrat, but he's too old for the job. Usher in somebody young and vibrant and, you know, that, that is going to take our country forward. We need to start moving forward. And these lifelong politicians, like, they all have to turn out. And we got to put a freaking restriction. I'm sorry. Past 75, you're not uh, 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 running for office, man. Like, yeah. I'm sorry. And it's not being ageist. Just like you have to be 35 you know, you can't be a little, you can't be wet behind the ears, right? You got to be at least 35 before you run for the presidency. Then they got to cap that at the other end too. This is our country. But the reason, mo most importantly, the reason why the Democrats need to get together, it's the same argument on the national level that we have here in the state and that I've made here on this podcast about the county. You know, Broward County is a very blue county. It's the most blue county in the, in the state. If we were to be have a very powerful force in the Broward Democratic Party as far as like organization and um, planning, we could flip the entire state. We have enough votes of Democrats here, and we can get more registered and informed, and get and have plans to get them out to the polls. We could have a very powerful position in the state, and we could rock elections. We could change what this state looks like politically. But we don't take that seriously and we have no plans and there's no there's no stronghold here. And it's a shame because of what's at stake in Florida. What what has happened in Florida in the last 30 years and especially in the last 10 years is because we don't have a stronghold, a, a, a very a blue stronghold in Broward County. I can make that argument all day long. That goes also to the top. The DNC and uh, the, the top, the heads... What is happening? What is at stake? The good guys that we're supposed to be. We can't even do our uh, what the plans are. You can tell me all day long what Democrats can do, but if you can't get them elected, then there's no point. We're we we are the ones. We are the protectors. We are the ones holding up the dam of fascism. This is literally what Democrats have to do, and you're not prepared for that. That is unacceptable. It's unacceptable. Biden is not a bad candidate. He's old. He he fucked up at the debate. He's who, but he's who we need. And if you it's take your hand have. off, you take your hand off because you're over here at the convention doing this instead of holding your hand up to that dam. It's coming. We've known it's coming, and you're not prepared. You are failing. Hundreds of millions of people will be affected by this change. It's dangerous and it's scary and you are the gatekeepers there. And what are you doing? 
You want to you want to create chaos? You want to you want to break the dam because that's there's cracks. It's happening. You have to get it together. There's too much at stake here. Too much. You've got my vote. You've got it. I, I I'll criticize Biden on Israel, on everything else that I'm not happy with Biden about, but I'm going to vote for him because I know what's on the other side. You got to talk to the people who don't know. And if Biden isn't the messenger, send out the messengers who can sell that message. But Newsom looked incredible. That minutes after the election, he was like, are you fucking crazy? Ja Representative Jasmine Crockett, if you haven't watched clips of her talking about Biden, oh, get so on good. it. So she's in, she's motivational. She's, she's like, incredible. She's like, there's no other option. Same thing. There's Whitmer, no Whitmer, option. Whitmer introduced him. I don't know if she was, I don't know if she was introducing him last night or something. Sounded incredible. Get out the messengers. Pay them money. I don't care what you have to do. Get them out. He doesn't have to be the messenger. He's the guy who's going to do the job, who cares about us, who will fight for us who will be there for the American people and stands for the right things and will not let bad things happen in this country. That's the message. Send out the people and put them in front of the crowds that need to hear them. Okay. That's all we're asking you to do. Get, 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 there's gotta be, um, um, pushes on these college campuses too. Like we gotta get the young people cause all, all the young people know is that he's old. That's it. That's it. Uh, so they need to galvanize these young folks too to say, listen, guys, like it's this or it's that. End of story. You know, it's 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 exhausting to watch on Twitter I when it's like yeah. it's like jokes and like he's old and like, like I get it. Yeah. And now as as early as Friday morning, I was seeing other things. Like, why aren't we talking about Trump? The spin was yeah. happening, and I appreciate that, but that's not the messenger we need. We need good messengers. We need we, those clips. And him. stop talking about Trump. How and about those, that? Those clips stop about talking rallying. about Trump. This yeah. is what happened the first time. Yeah. It's the same thing they do here. Just say this, just say yeah. that. All right. But what else are you going to do? What else you got? How are, when you get elected to be the new governor yeah. of Florida, what are you going to do? Tell us how we can flip house seats. What will happen in Florida if we flip house seats? Tell me. Tell me. And by the way, Florida's not in play. Oh, yeah. You gotta stop. I'm, I, I, I want to... Battleground I State, fucking girl. Battleground. Slap somebody. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Jamie Harrison, by the way, he's the head of the DNC. Yo, now I know what happened at the uh, debate. This motherfucker keeps coming to Florida and telling people he's peeing on our leg and telling us it's raining, like Judge <laughs> Judy likes to say. Stop t coming to Florida. Get the fuck out of here. Go back to uh, supervising your job. Because you dropped the ball. Stop coming to Florida and go, who Florida doesn't play? No, it's not. No, it's not. Maybe there's seats, you know, local seats and house seats. Maybe. But Florida is not going to go blue. It's not going to go For blue. Yeah, yeah, shut the fuck up. And Nikki Freed, cut the shit. Cut the shit. I know it's your job and you're getting paid to do it. You've got to be this cheerleader. I understand. But it's th it's this kind of bullshit that you have been feeding us for 40 years. And there's no change coming around the corner. Do you know why? Because all you do is say it and there's nothing behind it. There's no work being done. If you make a plan, a 10, 20 year plan that people can look at and believe in and you actually fund it and stop faking the fucking million dollar get out the vote that you fucking promised and never delivered on, that bullshit, that's why Florida won't flip. Because you don't do the fucking work. All you do is stand up in front of microphones and tweet shit. That's not work. Florida doesn't flip on that way. It doesn't flip. Biden and, the, and, the, and the, his campaign and the DNC is investing zero dollars here. Zero. You can, this is a better statement. Florida can be blue. Here's how we do it. Let's get to work. We need you. That's the message. Not we're going to turn blue because let me tell you what happens the day after the election. It happens everywhere, locally and on the state level. Yeah. Well, <sighs> didn't go the way we wanted, but we'll get them next time. I heard it for six years. I heard, went through three election cycles being a top, very top volunteer here. With, with clubs and caucuses in our own organization. We heard the same bullshit. And I don't know how these people who are involved with the party for 30 years, 20 years, 10 years, actually go, yeah, we'll get them next time. Based on what? Based on what? Were your hopes in a dream? You put a fucking uh, something on your 
pillow and pray at night when you go to sleep that, 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 that this will manifest somehow? It doesn't work that way. Georgia flipped blue because of uh, 10 organizations run by black women. Yeah. Yes. Who came out and went into the areas that Democratic Party had ignored for 100 years and got people registered, organized buses to get people on buses to go to polling places and to vote. They organized for 10 years to flip that state. There's no day one that has happened in the state of Florida with Democrats to get that going. We've got 20, 25 years ahead of us to flip this state blue. But you got to take one step forward and make a plan. You have failed to do that. Stop lying to people. It's infuriating. And all it tells me is you don't see, and, and by the way, don't you dare run for governor. Don't you fucking dare. Don't you fucking dare. It's an embarrassment. Don't do it. I don't know who the fucking Republicans are going to put up, but honey, it ain't it. They're, they're going to put up. And if you Mr. think Samson. your last election failed, you were beat by Charlie Crist. Charlie Crist. And if you're going to point to this fucking four, this couple of years of your performance here, we need someone strong. We need and uh, who's loud and who's knowledgeable and who knows how to do the work. That's what we need, okay? We need a blue governor here to stop this. Imagine what would happen in Florida if we had a governor vetoing horse All shit. Now they would try, they start creating laws to like stop him from his power like they did to Gretchen Whitmer in, Mich in Michigan. But we need someone better than that. So stop bullshitting us. The, the, the state of Florida and the Democrats here had given way too much leeway to people like this. Well, this is who we know. She's our friend. She comes to our caucus meetings. She's, she's quick. No, that's not, that is not a resume. That's not a resume. Have we covered it? We've covered it. We, it's an hour, girl. Oh, oh my God, Tina. <laughs> well, do you want to do your story? Do you want to save it for next week? I mean, what do you want to do? do? What should we do? We'll call this. We're going to call this the debate episode. Okay. And that's it. That's no, it. No number. No number. I love it. You don't need a number. Who do you think you are? I love it. Um, uh, let oh, me say this. Let's keep going. And, and, and also, <laughs> okay, we're going to keep going. And I just want to say this too. I want to say this too. I want to say this too. Um, as human beings, we're, we all, our minds kind of work very similar. And it is very, very easy to go... Uh, to get angry and get pissed off and get, you know, we all, we, we feel your frustration that Biden is the, is the candidate. We've been there. We've been there for years wondering what's going to happen. So I get it. I get it. But right now, moving forward, I just want to be a little positive, which is hard for me because even, even this week, even before the debate, Alfredo was like, you're so pessimistic. Cause I'm like, is Biden going to win? But then when the, like I said, I don't want to watch the debate. I can't, I don't want to see what's going to happen because I could, feel it like I don't want to see a spotlight on these two people it's I, very I, upsetting to me I gotta tell you I went in so naive <laughs> I went in I'm telling you I went in thinking about kind of the Joe Biden that we've been seeing you know what I mean right yes that's what I went in yes expecting <laughs> I hear I know and what I you mean I knew that it was going to be a bit of a shit show because it's Trump but I was excited about the fact that there's like no audience I was excited about the fact that um they were muting the mics so, so i'm like oh, okay this is great like it gives him a chance to like rebut yeah and like not be yelled at like you know i, I was you. i was I, I was actually thinking i know that this this could be good Ugh. and then um i wasn't gonna watch it and then the texts start coming in yeah about, it was incredible the text about, i was getting i mean it was like his voice he's sick he's oh, and i'm like what, what's going on and then i i went on and and i I, I, I was like, I, I don't, I, I can't hear. I don't know what he's saying. And then my, I spoke to my mother-in-law and she goes, I started changing the channels because I thought maybe it was my perception. Oh like, that's my how, God. Like that's how bad it was in the beginning that you could not understand him. Yeah. And, and debates and, are, and the debate, the first 10 like, minutes of the debate just, is the most important, you know? I just started to have that feeling yeah. like I did in 2016. Right after the election and I, <laughs> That's how I, I, felt. I start and, and I had my headphones in and I was walking around my house mm. 
screaming at my husband and my husband's like, I'm not, I'm not going to watch this. And I'm like, yeah, no. you don't understand me. You don't understand. And then the fact that they're talking about their height yeah. and their golf handicap as like these, 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 and, 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 you know, at the end, like, and Biden had some good comebacks. Yeah. He did, but like, he just wasn't loud or clear enough. You know what yeah. I mean? And I, again, <sighs> listen, it's very and, and you easy. could see like his face going like this is ridiculous. Like, I know, it's a but lie. Uh, listen, he kept calling him out on the lie. I, I, I think he was waiting for them to to, to fact check him. Like, the, and they'd go, then they go to the next question, and I was like, I think Biden was like, "Is no one gonna say it's, that I mean, that's not true?" Or so I think. So like, again, moving forward, <laughs> we know what we have to do. We know that there's one goal. There's one goal, and that is to keep Trump out of the White House. We can be very upset with Democrats. We can be very upset that Biden maybe did more than taking this on. He shouldn't have done it. And we can have all those conversations. And also, you and I, and anyone else watching this, I imagine, unless some very important DNC people are watching, then you can <laughs> hire us. We'll be the official podcast of the convention. Oh, please. <laughs> Send me there. Uh, we will, and it'll be a real. Yeah. It won't be some talking head going, oh, no, we'll, no. we're going we're gonna to let you know. Yeah. We're going to say this um, hot. Yeah. By the way, I'm going to say, say BC, hire me because I could have predicted this fucking shit a year ago. <laughs> Why are you not paying me? Um, <sighs> here's the thing. We don't get to decide what happens at the convention. No. We don't, we're not going to be able to do that. So we're at the mercy of people who sometimes don't have the greatest, you know, foresight of like, what's the best thing. I'm sure that they're doing a lot of testing. I'm sure they're, I, they have to, these very uh, great political minds right now trying to figure out what are the best options for the country. There's conversations happening with Joe Biden, President Biden, and it's ultimately going to be up to him what he wants to do. Um, after Friday's performance and of all the things that I saw him do Friday, he was all over the place Friday. Yeah. All over the place. But, he but looked incredible. He sounded incredible. But where was I understand. But we can't look backwards. Let's start looking forward. We gotta let that go. That cold medicine because kicked in too late, man. We, we gotta keep looking forward <laughs> because we've got a long we've got it's a long road before November and yeah. there's a lot of things that have to be done. And whatever happens at the convention, we have no control over. But whatever the outcome is there, we have to Bear our heads in the sand whether yeah. we like whatever's happening or not, and we need to keep Trump out of the White House. Yeah. Hold and I, and swallow. Uh, on behalf of the D the Democrats and the DNC, which I have no power of or involvement with, I apologize that this is what it's like. But this is what it's like. And I know that it sucks. And I know that this is not where we want to be. I get it. I'm there with you. It's frustrating and it's awful. And we deserve better. We deserve strong candidates and people who care about this country and want to see it move forward and never falter and don't put us in this position. I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah. But here we are. And it's, I, Trump, and it's a big but. It's a big, it's Trump trust me, it's a big but. It's not Trump. That's it. Those are your options. Trump. It's, we're on the, we're not on, again, and we've so been doing this podcast. The not, the not Trump train. We've been doing this podcast for five years and, and, and we've done a general election and we've done midterm elections and we always say to you, we're on the edge of this cliff. We're on the edge of a cliff. This is it. So we have to let Friday or let Thursday go, let that debate go, and we need to move forward. And the way that we do that is together. You grab all the people that you know, all the people that you love, and you make sure that they know that Trump cannot win in November. And here's why. Here's why. Yeah, these are the talk about yourself, but talk about yourself and how it will affect you and your family. And talk about the people, how it will affect them. And if they go, I don't care, that's fine. Just plant the seed. Let people know. Take them voting with you. We got to make this change in November. And I don't know what happens at this convention. It's all of this is new. This is not the 1800s. We've done plenty of podcasts about convention floor uh, nominees. It's wild stuff. There's some wild yes. time in our history. This is a moment in right. our history that will be written about for hundreds and hundreds oh of years God. if we're allowed to read books. All yeah. I'm saying is that <laughs> this has happened at conventions 18, but well, there's a really oh famous one that we covered in 1875. Yes. I don't know. It was a really famous convention where it went back and forth. Yeah. And it's six or seven times it went back and I mean, forth before exciting. they had a nominee. That's exciting. It's, but it we, is. But it's we exciting. We don't have time for that. Whoever it is, I'm voting for. Yeah. That's what I know. But that's just, what I know. But you got to leave Biden there because money, funding, and, 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 like, you know what I mean? Like, we can't, um, what is it? You can't switch whatever midfield, like, you can't. I don't know. DeSantis moves that. his money around a lot. I'm going to tell you right now. Yeah. If Biden want to move his money around, just fucking do it. Fuck these people. Yeah. Fuck these people. 
rules, laws. What? This is America, honey. There's no such thing. I know. Trump is spending no all thing. that money on his own, like, attorney's fees. So yeah. I don't know. I don't know how it works. Yeah. But I was reading about it, and they were like, he can't just move that money over to another campaign. Maybe we'll find a way. I mean, Maybe there's a path he can't, or something. Yeah, he can't. Yeah. Right? I mean, I'm sure Trump would have found a way. No, you know they'll I mean? find a way. I, I'm not worried about that. We I, cannot like, have a Trump. Yeah. It, like, if Trump wins, then it's the Trump family until the end of time. Like, oh, my God, please. I don't know where I'm going to go. Like, I, I, I'm so panicked. I know. I am so much more panicked than I was because in 2016, I was stupid. And I was like, no one's going to vote for this Yahoo. You know what I mean? Right. And in 2020, I was like so nervous. I think that's a lot of it, too, is they really, but, people think that people thought Trump was going to falter. And that was another yes. thing that happened in that debate. He didn't look that bad. I mean, he didn't. He was he lying. No, he was lying. He looked but fine. He, he was. He, he was, was giving him the sin. He was giving him the he business. He was quick. That's he the was worst part. Quick, that was he was the quick worst part. Because you know, like like Biden would end a sentence, and he would take the last word yeah. of that sentence and go, "I don't know about that. I don't even know what he's saying." Like, yeah. I mean, he was very quick. Yeah. He very he, he, quick he, on he his feet. I know. It was not. Uh, that was the worst part. It wasn't like it was two feeble people. No. It was one lying. One was lying. It was one but massive he was, lying But he was saying maniac. things clearly. <laughs> but he was very clear about the lies. And then you had this per And then they kept panning over to Biden. It was not kind to him. His, there was not his there mouth was, open. Yeah, no, no. And I'm like, where's the drool? The drool's uh, about to come we out. We can't talk about this anymore. I'm going to fucking cry. All right. All right. Please. Vote for Biden. Uh, Tina, Tina just wants to keep beating me with this. I don't I'm want to sorry. hear it, Tina. I can't. I'm trying to move. I'm trying to end this movie. Okay, we're forward. positive. We're how, positive. How am I the positive one on this podcast now? Vote Biden. <laughs> <laughs> That's where we are. Yeah. And God, you know what else? I never thought I'd be again. Here I am again promoting this motherfucker. Like I Grandpa Joe. literally was saying all these years, please God, who's going to be the person? Yeah. I I can't believe it. I can't believe it. But, but again, it's Trump or not Trump. It's that's clear. Like, it's there's a, white. Yeah, there's a clear message. Boom, boom. <laughs> dictatorship, not dictatorship. Oh, my God. Oh women's my God. rights, no women's rights. Okay, well. Go Biden. <laughs> no. Listen, Tina's not going out on the campaign trail. No. You can't have her out there. Why? Because she'll be saying all this stuff, and then it'll be like, did you see him when the drool was coming yeah. out of the top of the Tina, stop! we got to go forward, Tina. I know. No, I mean, what are we going to do? We're part of a machine that we are not in control of. That's that's it. We are on a, this country is on a track moving in a direction that we have no control over. And the worst part is we are the conductors. We are the ones supposed to be driving. We are the ones who no. put people in power. We're the ones who choose who's on the train, who's moving the train. No. We're supposed to be the ones doing it. We got to take that back. We do, because right now we're cogs in a rusty ass mach machine. Yeah, and that's you know not how I mean? it's supposed to be. No. They're dragging us along with them. That's not how it's supposed to be. Oh my God. Democratic Party, do better, plan, and look forward. And 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 then for for all, for God's sake, I don't know what happens at this convention. I, I oh my God, I, 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 like I start to it's get gonna dry heat. It's gonna be fine. I start to dry heat. When is it? It's about, like, like in two weeks. Girl, I'm like. <laughs> What is it? I don't know, but I'm it's like... It's coming up. I am out of my mind. Because here's the other thing about the convention. I don't think he's going to give those votes up. I really don't. No, I don't think so. It. And also, sure the people there are sycophants. They love Biden. They're, they're not going to give this to anybody else. And that's what's wrong August. with the DNC. August. Okay, that's, and that's what's yeah. wrong with the DNC. The DNC thinks that they can manipulate all these people. You don't understand. These people would blow Biden. Okay? They'd, they'd suck that dick. Woo! They would. These are not people who are just like, I don't know. These are people who ran in wherever they live to be, to, to go to Minnesota. Wait, where is it? Chicago. Chicago. Chicago to vote for Biden. Like, you're not, they're not, you're not going to take that away from them. They're not doing that. So, <laughs> girl. Oh, well, I know. It's so funny. So now we got two months. We got two months of stress. Remember when I said maybe this should be the last year of the podcast? This is, this is the kind of shit I'm talking about. This is it. If this is the last year of the podcast, which maybe it will be, uh, Tina, I guess, I, I don't know. <laughs> After November, it'll be a month, another month. <laughs> four oh, more, no, if four, Trump four wins, more, I don't know. We're not coming. We'll just do one last uh, quick live know. on Instagram saying bye. Bye. <laughs> I don't Thanks for the memories. 
<laughs> so we're leaving. Yeah, no, I, I, I can you imagine four years? No, 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 no. I can't. No, 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 no. I can't. I can't. I will be get playing my skate. It's like I start thinking about it and everything ceases up. I can't. Oh, that, that was one of my favorite tweets that I, let me just say one of my favorite, one of my favorite tweets that I did <laughs> Friday. I said, I live in Florida. It's 100 degrees in June. There's a fascist in the governor's, governor's mansion, and people are eating spaghetti out of the Stanley Cup. Yeah. If you think I'm scared about Biden being reelected, try again. Like yeah. I'm not scared of that at all. I know he can do We're the in job. We're the trenches, man. I know. We know. He, I know he can do the job. I know he's a great president, and he will have my vote. So it, he doesn't. It doesn't scare me. Not at all. Especially because I know how politics works. He's a. He's. He's smart. He has convictions. He's been fighting for the American people for. 50 years. And he has a team. The he man knows what he's doing. Yeah, and that's the thing. The man it's knows the administrative yeah. team. That's right. Let's because not, again, let's it's not, forget not that. we are not a, a monarchy, right? Like he is the figurehead, but he has a great team behind him, and that's who we're voting for. That's, we are that's voting it. for the administration. Yeah. So think of it that way. And uh, and then we'll see you next week because we gotta we gotta stop doing this. Ooh. I I gotta go. Okay. <laughs> Enjoy the debate episode. Yes. <laughs> Bye. Bye.